Why would my convictions be aligned to his convictions? I don't like what he's saying in his word. If I do this, what if I lose my business? If I do this, what if I don't get married? If I do this, what if I don't experience the fun? What if I miss out? What if I lose my job? What if I get hurt? We have all of those reasons. How can I be different when everything around me pushes me to give in? Anxiety, depression, anger, purposelessness, entitlement, discontent, blurred morality or false kind of morality, and pride. These toxic realities are common in this world. But the good news is, God wants us to be different and not live out these kinds of toxic realities. That's why in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, look at what Paul wrote there. Do not be conformed to this world. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. He wants us to be different, not to conform. But I know it's hard not to conform when a lot of people are living that kind of life. How can I be different when everything around me pushes me to give in? Our topic for today is very important. And this is the main point. Make a stand for Jesus. Now, how am I going to do this? How am I going to make a stand for Jesus? But let me explain what it means when you say make a stand for Jesus. When you say make a stand for Jesus, it means that his convictions, God's convictions, his morals, his moral values, and his standards will be mine as well. That's going to be my culture. How I respond towards difficult people is based on His Word. How I love my family is based on how He wants me to love my family. How I operate my business is based on how He wants me to operate my business. How I relate with my office mates, with my friends, how I relate with the opposite sex is based on how God wants me to do it. That's what it means when you say making a stand for Jesus. But I know some of you are thinking, Marty, why would my convictions be aligned to His convictions? I don't like what he's saying in his word. If I do this, what if I lose my business? If I do this, what if I don't get married? Maybe that's your fear. Some of you, that's your fear. If I do this, what if I don't experience the fun? What if I miss out? What if I lose my job? What if I get hurt? We have all of those reasons. That's why this message, making a stand for Jesus, is very important. And here's the good news for all of us. There's a group of guys that they had all the reasons to give in because of the pressures, but they didn't. And we can find this story in the book of Daniel, chapter 1. So let's look at verse 1. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem and besieged it. So the story behind this is this. There was a powerful empire called the Babylonian Empire. They were conquering different nations and they conquered Jerusalem, the southern kingdom of Israel. And after conquering them, this is what happened. The king told Ashpenaz, the chief of his officials, to bring in some of the sons of Israel, including some of the royal family and of the nobles. And included in this are youths or young people in whom there was no impairment, meaning to say flawless, who were good-looking, suitable for instruction in every kind of expertise or full of wisdom, endowed with understanding, discerning knowledge, who had ability to serve in the king's court. So that's the purpose. They're going to serve the emperor, the king. So he ordered Ashpenaz to teach them the literature and language of the Chaldeans. Meaning to say, you should change their belief system. Their conviction should be the conviction of the Chaldeans. Their moral values should be our moral values. If they're worshiping a different kind of God, they should worship our God. That's the pressure that was about to be given to Daniel and to his friends. What are the names of these people? So now among them, from the sons of Judah were Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, Azariah. 
Then the commander of the officials assigned new names. And these names are quite familiar for a lot of us. The names were Daniel. He assigned the name Belteshazzar, Hananiah, Shadrach, Mishael, Meshach, and Azariah, Abednego. These are names of their gods, deities, their idols. So they're saying, okay, your conviction will be different since you're now here in the Babylonian Empire. You should follow us. Imagine the pressure. I told you, they had all the reasons. These guys, they had all the reasons to give in to the pressures around them. And they could have thought the things that I mentioned earlier. They could have said, if I don't do this, if I don't give in, they might kill me. I might lose my life. If I don't give in, they will make fun of me. Because look at the pressure. The pressure was this. They were exiled. They were in exile. Uh, they were in house arrest. It's just like quarantine. They are to serve the king that they don't like, right? So imagine that. Imagine a situation that you don't like. You are to serve this king. And not just that. They were being pressured by officials to have different kind of values. And the other Israelites, the other Jewish people who were with them, were giving in. They were saying, okay, yes, I'm going to follow that. I'm going to have money. I'm going to have these things. Okay lang, go ahead. But look at how Daniel and his friends responded. Because if I was there, I tell you, I could have given in easily. Maybe for a lot of us, when we, if we're in that situation, we're going to give in. We're going to say, I, I, I think this is okay, but not for Daniel and his friends. Because look at the next verse in verse 8. Daniel made up his mind. He made a stand. And I love the Hebrew word. The Hebrew word here is the word sum or sim. It means you set, you firmly establish it that no, I'm not going to be moved. This is going to be my conviction. That's my prayer for us as we listen to this message, that we are going to make a stand for Jesus, just like how Daniel and his friends made a stand for the Lord. They made a stand that they would not defile, he would not defile himself with the king's choice food or with the wine which he drank. So he sought permission from the commander of the officials that he might not defile himself. Imagine, he, he obeyed the Lord, so he, he decided not to defile himself. And he did his part and talked to the official. Now you might be asking, why would not they not eat the food? The, that food is delicious. It could be steak, lobster, crab, delicious delicacies in the Babylonian empire. They are in the king's palace. Of course, those are delicious food. Why would they not eat that? Two possible reasons. Number one, maybe these are the foods that they were pro prohibited to eat. Right? Moses wrote about that. You cannot eat this. You cannot eat that. So maybe that's one reason. The other reason is most probably these food were offered to their gods. And definitely they don't want to do anything about that. So they decided, no, I'm not going to be defiled by these things. Not just Daniel, but his friends as well. And look at what he said. Huh? Daniel made up his mind. It's connected to Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Do not be conformed to this world. But renew your mind, transform your life by renewing your mind. You see, it starts in the mind. Whatever we put in our mind, the more we put toxic things in our mind, I tell you, it's going to be toxic in how we respond to people. The more we put bad things in our minds and in our hearts, the more that we're going to act in a way that displeases God. That's why we need to make a stand for Jesus. So how do we do this. How do we make a stand for him? Let me give you three things. Train, trust, and try. What does that mean? Let's go with number one, train. If you want to make a stand for Jesus, it start by training your mind and your heart with God's word. We need to immerse ourselves with the word of God. Because here's the thing. How can I make a stand for something I don't know? Right? How can I believe on that something like, like, like what Jesus is trying to tell me? How can I believe in what Jesus is trying to tell me if I don't know it? And I know a lot of people, he does, they don't know the word of God. That's why it starts in his word. Look at another story in the life of Daniel when he was being pressured to pray to another person, not to God. In Daniel chapter 6, this is what happened. In verse 7, 
all the commissioners of the kingdom, the prefects, the satraps, the counselors, the governors, they consulted together that the king should establish a statute and enforce an injunction that anyone who offers a prayer to any god or person besides you, O king, this is a different king, this is not Nebuchadnezzar, for 30 days shall be thrown into the lion's den. But Daniel didn't obey that. In fact, Daniel in verse 10 learned that the document was signed. He entered his house and in his roof chamber, he had windows open towards Jerusalem. So it was seen by a lot of people. He continued kneeling on his knees three times a day, praying and offering praise before God, just as he had been doing previously. In other words, this was his culture. This was his practice. These were his values. I really believe he knows what was written in the word of God in Joshua chapter 1, verse 8, where it says there, the book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous and then you will be successful. So he knows about this. He's, he read about that. That's why he started following it. And the more he read about this word, about God's word, the more it influenced his mind, his heart, and it transformed his actions. It's impossible to make a stand for Jesus if we don't know his word. Because how can we know him if we don't spend time with him? You see, our convictions are formed by what is constantly absorbed by our mind. Whatever we put in our mind, let's say we absorb different books, we read it every day, we read those kinds of things every day, we watch those kinds of movies every day, it will influence us. We listen to these kinds of message, or different kinds of messages that it's not about God. Every day, it's going to influence us. And eventually, the conviction that was being taught to us, that's going to be our conviction. That's going to be the, our practice. Those will be our moral values. And definitely, that's how we are going to act. But if we bombard our mind and our heart with God's word, it's going to transform us. Just like what happened in this quarantine. You know, during this quarantine was the first time I started watching K-drama. Okay? I didn't watch K-drama before, before the quarantine, but my wife loves K-drama. I know a, love, a lot of you, you love to watch K-drama. So I started watching it. And I started enjoying it. So I watched one series and started enjoying it. And the more I enjoyed it, the more I was thinking about it. And the more I longed to watch the next episode. And not just that, since in a K-drama, they will show different kinds of products, right? Like ice cream, grilled beef, different kinds of food, restaurants to eat, places to go to. It influenced my mind and gave me somehow the desire that I want to eat that ice cream. I want to buy that now. I want to taste that grilled beef. I want to go to that restaurant. In fact, for some people, they started studying Korean so that they won't have to read subtitles and understand it easily, right? And for some of them, they want to live in Korea. And maybe for some of them, they know more about Korean history than Filipino history. What am I saying? I'm saying these things because a simple series can influence the way we act. I'm not saying you stop watching K-drama, okay? Some of you will get angry at me if I say that. That's not what I'm saying. It's just a proof that whatever we immerse ourselves into, whether it's a series or a movie or a book, it's going to influence our mind, our heart, and our actions. Imagine if we immerse ourselves in God's Word. We read His Word daily. We spend time memorizing His Word. We have memory verse every day, every, every week. We talk to people who loves God. We are part of a D group and listen to the Word of God intently. Definitely, that's going to influence my, our minds and our hearts. Now, I know, I know some of you are saying, but, but Marty, I, K-drama is fun, okay? The Word of God is it's not that fun sometimes. It's a little bit boring sometimes. I don't want to keep reading. I'm not good in reading. I want you to pray this kind of prayer. If you're struggling with that one, pray this prayer. Lord, teach me to love your word. Because that's how he reveals himself to us. And the more we read about him, the more we grow in our love for him. 
The more we grow in our love for Him, the more our values change, are transformed, and the more we can make a stand for Jesus. So what's our message again? Make a stand for Jesus. So how do we do this? First, to train using the Word of God. Number two, to trust. What does that mean when you say we need to trust our Lord. It means we need to fully trust who God is and what He can do. Because I realize there's a big difference between knowing Him in the head and completely trusting Him with your heart. A lot of people in this world, they would say, yeah, I know God. Yeah, I read His Word sometimes. Yeah, I go to church sometimes. Yeah, I pray. But there's no full or complete trust to Him. Unlike the friends of Daniel, look at what happened to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. This is another story as well. But I'm just showing this to you to prove that they were practicing these things. That's why they were able to make up or they were able to make up their mind to make a stand for God. What happened to them? In Daniel chapter 3, there was an edict in the provinces of, provinces of the Babylonian Empire that they should worship the statue of the king. They will bow down when they hear music but not for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. What happened to them? In verse 14, Nebuchadnezzar began speaking and said to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods, nor worship the golden statue that I have set up? And then what did the three say? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to the king, Nebuchadnezzar, we are not in need of an answer to give you concerning this. Meaning to say, we know our stand. We believe, look at the next verse, if it be so, our God whom we serve is able. That's believing in God, trusting God, able to rescue us from the furnace of the blame, of blazing fire. He will rescue us from your hand, O king. But even if he does not, that's trust. Even if he does not, let it be known to you, O king, that we are not going to serve your gods, nor worship the golden statue that you have set up. That's faith. That's the strong belief in God. You know, you know, a lot of us, we've, we know God's promises. We know that God is good. We know that God is powerful. We know that God is able. We know that God loves us. But when He asks us, okay, do this. I wait, Lord, parang, I don't know if I can do that. I thought you know. I thought we know. I thought we believe. If we believe, then definitely, okay, Lord, this is what the world is telling me to do, but this is what you want me to do. It seems good to follow the standards of this world, but I trust you. I'm not going to follow that. I'm going to go to you. That's what Daniel and his friends did. It's just like this. For example, for example, you are in a basketball game. You're down by one point and there's five seconds on the shot clock. You're the point guard. And two of your teammates are open to take the last shot. One of your teammates, his name is Steph Curry. And the other one is someone pretending to be Steph Curry. They're both open. Now well, let me ask you, to whom will you pass the ball? An easy answer. Of course, to the one pretending to be Steph Curry. I'm just kidding. Of course, you're going to pass it to Steph Curry. Why? He has a proven track record. He can hit shots, especially if he's open. Why would you pass it to someone who is just pretending to be Steph Curry? That's called trust because you know who God is. Do, do you see the connection? If I don't know God, I'm not going to pass the ball of my life to Him. That's why it's, it starts with training our minds and our hearts. So if I know Him because of His Word and I believe what He says, I'm going to pass my, the ball of my life to Him. Okay, Lord, this is what's happening in my love life. I pass it on to you. Okay, Lord, this is what hap what's happening in my business. This is I don't understand. I'm tempted to compromise, to cheat, but Lord, I'm passing it to you. Because you know what's best. Okay, Lord, this is what's happening in our marriage. I'm tempted to cheat. I'm tempted to just let go of this, but I'm passing it to you. Okay, Lord, this is what's happening in our finances. This is what's happening with our health, with these people that I am having a hard time working with. I'm passing the ball of my life to you. You see, our problem is we don't believe that God is who He says He is. Because if, we're, if we believe fully, that God is who He says He is, the ball of our lives, we're going to pass it on to Him. That's how you make a stand for Jesus. And that's what point number three is. So if I train my mind and my heart, immerse myself in God's Word, then definitely I'm going to be aware 
I'm going to know who God is. Then the more I know who God is, I'm going to trust Him. Right? I'm going to trust Him. I'm going to trust Him. And if I really trust Him, then I'm going to try. I'm going to obey. Because there are a lot of principles in this world. There are a lot of people who will counsel you, do this, do that. If you don't do it, you won't experience it, right? In the same way with God's promises, if you don't try it, how will you know? That's what happened to Daniel and his friends. Look at what happened to them. After making up their mind, okay, I'm going to make a stand. That's what Daniel said. He was talking to his friends. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Okay, we can't eat this food. We don't want to defile ourselves. Okay, I'm going to talk to the officer. I'm going to talk to the officer. That's what Daniel did. So he went to the officer. It was a situation that is outside his control. Why? He cannot change the officer's heart. Maybe he was afraid that going to the officer, what if he says no? What if he kills me? What if he sends us in prison? What if we get exiled away from this kingdom? We are now comfortable because we are in this palace. What if we lose all of these things? But look at what happened to Daniel and his friends. In verse 9, God granted Daniel favor and compassion in the sight of the commander of the officials. You see, we need to trust God because God is moving in areas that we don't see, areas that we cannot change. He did that in the life of Daniel and his friends. And then eventually the commander told Daniel, I am afraid of my Lord, the king, who has allotted your food and your drink. For why should he see your faces looking gaunt in comparison to the youths who are your own age? then the, you would make me forfeit my head to the king. I'm going to die. You're going to lose weight if you eat whatever you want to eat. And then Daniel said to the official, uh, Daniel said this, please put your servants to the test. Let's just try it. Okay, let's just try it for 10 days. Let us be given some vegetables and water to drink. Vegetables to eat and water to drink. And look at what happened. Okay, look at what happened after 10 days. After 10 days, let our... Ex- Uh, appearance be examined in your presence and the presence of the youths who are eating the king's choice food. The lobster, the steak, the crabs, the whatever delicious food are there, the delicacies, the desserts, and deal with your servants according to what you see. So if you compare vegetables and water compared to those kinds of food, every day for 10 days, vegetables and water, I don't know if you've tried that. I haven't tried that. You're going to lose weight. But look at what happened to Daniel and his friends. So the official listened. And at the end of 10 days, their appearance seemed better. They were glowing. And not just glowing. Look at the next phrase. They were fatter than all the youths who had been eating the king's choice food. I don't know about you, okay? But when I studied that word, that, that word fatter in Hebrew means bari. Or it's the Hebrew word bari. It means fat, plump, or plentiful. In other words, they were healthier. They became fatter. How can you become fatter when you just eat vegetables and drink water? We all know that for some of you who tried to lose weight already, you know that's that's part of the discipline. You want to lose weight? Eat vegetables for a week or for two weeks and just drink water. Don't eat any kinds of meat. But that's the miracle that God allowed Daniel and his friends to experience. You know what? Many have missed out on God's miracles all because of disobedience. And look at the miracles that Daniel and his friends could have missed if they didn't obey. Look at the next verse. As for these four youths, God gave them knowledge and intelligence in every kind of literature and expertise. Daniel even understood all kinds of visions and dreams. In other words, not just health, but also wisdom. And not just wisdom, At the end of the 10 days, which the king has specified for presenting them, the commander of the officials presented them before Nebuchadnezzar. So when he, when they were presented to Nebuchadnezzar, he talked to these people, to the four of them, and out of them all, not one was found like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. And the king said, I want these four guys. Honor. It's not just good health. It's not just wisdom but even bestowing honor to these four guys. And not just that, look at how they were described. As for every matter of expertise and understanding about which the king consulted them, he found them 10 times better than all the soothsayer priests and conjurers who were in all 
his realm. That's why we make a stand for Jesus. How do we do that? We train our hearts and our minds with the word of God. We trust what we read there. We trust who he says he is. And then if he says, do this, obey me, let go of this, follow me here, do not conform yourself to the pattern of this world. Try it so that we can test that his will is good, pleasing, and perfect. But you know what? For some of us, maybe the reason why we don't want to make a stand for Jesus is because we got hurt many times. Got hurt because of other people. Got disappointed because of fellow Christians. Got hurt because we were expecting God to do this and he didn't do it. You see, we need to make a stand for Jesus because he made a stand for you. He made a stand for me. Jesus came down here. Jesus died for your sins and my sins. He was beaten up. He was crucified because he loves you so much. He loves me so much. The reason why I keep on doing this, even though there are times that it's hard, even though there are trials, there are tragedies, I keep doing this because he never gave up on me. And that's why I'm telling people, make a stand for Jesus. You see, when we make a stand for Jesus, life becomes beautiful. It doesn't mean it's going to be perfect. It doesn't mean that it's going to be problem-free. No, there will be problems. There will be challenges. But God's love will embrace us, surround us, and give us hope that everything here is temporary, but what we have in Him is forever. That's why we make a stand for Jesus. Now, as we close our time, I want to pray for you. I want to pray for two groups of people today. The first group, for some of you, you don't have that relationship with Jesus. You haven't really made a stand for him. You don't know him. You have heard about him, but you don't know his word. You don't know how much he loves you. You haven't completely trusted him. And I want to pray for you in a while that today will be the day that you will trust him with all of your heart. For the second group of people that I want to pray for, for some of you or a lot of you, you have a relationship with Jesus. Jesus is your Lord. Jesus is your Savior but you're giving in to the pattern of this world. There are certain practices that you know is not right, it's not pleasing to God, but you're giving in to that. Maybe you, those questions were your questions. Now, what if I miss out? What if it doesn't work? What if I follow Jesus and I just get hurt? And you're scared, but you know what you need to do. So I want to pray for you. So can we bow down our heads? Let's pray. I want to first pray for that first group of people. Lord, you know the hearts of these people who doesn't have a relationship with you. Lord, I pray that today will be the day of their salvation. That they will trust you with all of their heart, mind, soul, and strength. That starting today, they will make a stand for you. Because you made a stand for us. You never gave up. You died for our sins, Jesus. So I pray that you speak to the hearts of every single person here, especially those who don't have a relationship with you, that they will hold on to your love, believe in you with all of their hearts. And Lord, I also want to pray for a lot of us who do have a relationship with you, but somehow we give in. We give in to the pattern of this world. We give in to the pressures. We are scared of stepping in faith and trusting you because we don't know what's going to happen. But Lord, please strengthen our faith. Help us to try it. Help us to obey. Because how will we know that your will is good, pleasing, and perfect if we're not going to do it? Thank you, Lord, for how you're going to answer our prayers. We bless you. We worship you. And we give you all honor and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Here are some discussion questions that you and your family can talk about. Number one. In what ways have you been conforming to the patterns of this world? Number two, what do you need to do to be transformed so you will dare to be different from the world? And finally, how will you make a stand for Jesus starting this week? I pray that God will bless and enrich your discussion. God bless.